God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us praise the Lord for his mercy, and for the wonderful things he has done for men. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. Let them say this, the Lord's redeemed, whom he redeemed from the hand of the foe, and gathered from far off lands, from east and west, north and south. Some wandered in the desert, in the wilderness, finding no way to a city they could dwell in. Hungry they were, and thirsty. Their soul was fainting within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress, and he led them along the right way to reach a city they could dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his love, for the wonders he does for men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, he fills the hungry with good things. Some lay in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and chains, having defied the words of God and spurned the counsels of the Most High. He crushed their spirit with toil. They stumbled, there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them forth from darkness and gloom and broke their chains to pieces. Let them thank the Lord for his goodness, for the wonders he does for men, for he bursts the gates of bronze and shatters the iron bars. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord for, for his, his mercy, mercy and, and for, for the wonderful things he has done for men. Men have seen the works of God, the marvels he has done. Some were sick on account of their sins and afflicted on account of their guilt. They had a loathing for every food. They came close to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He sent forth his word to heal them, and saved their life from the grave. Let them thank the Lord for his love, for the wonders he does for men. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanks, and tell of his deeds with rejoicing. Some sailed to the sea in ships to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds, the wonders he does in the deep. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, raising up the waves of the sea, tossed up to heaven, then into the deep, their soul melted away in their distress. They staggered, reeled like drunken men, for all their skill was gone. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. All the waves of the sea were hushed. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. Let them exalt him in the gathering of the people, and praise him in the meeting of all the elders. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Men have seen the, the works, works of God, God the, the marvels he has done. Those who love the Lord will see and rejoice. They will understand his loving kindness. He changes streams into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, fruitful land into a salty waste for the wickedness of those who live there. But he changes desert into streams, thirsty ground into springs of water. There he settles the hungry 
And they build a city to dwell in. They sow fields and plant their vines. These yield crops for the harvest. He blesses them. They grow in numbers. He does not let their herds decrease. He pours contempt upon princes, makes them wander in trackless wastes. They diminish, are reduced to nothing by oppression, evil, and sorrow. But he raises the needy from distress, makes families numerous as a flock. The upright see it and rejoice, but all who do wrong are silenced. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things, and consider the love of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those who love the Lord will see and rejoice. They They will will understand understand his loving kindness. Your truth, O God, is high as the clouds. Lord, your goodness is deep as the ocean. From the first letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. Man of God that you are, Flee from all this. Instead, seek after integrity, piety, faith, love, steadfastness, and a gentle spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. Take firm hold on the everlasting life to which you were called when, in the presence of many witnesses, you made your noble profession of faith. Before God, who gives life to all, and before Christ Jesus, who in bearing witness made his noble profession before Pontius Pilate, I charge you to keep God's command without blame or reproach until our Lord Jesus Christ shall appear. This appearance God will bring to pass at his chosen time. He is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and who dwells in unapproachable light whom no human being has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and everlasting rule. Amen. Tell those who are rich in this world's goods not to be proud and not to rely on so uncertain a thing as wealth. Let them trust in the God who provides us richly with all things for our use. Charge them to do good, to be rich in good works and generous, sharing what they have. Thus will they build a secure foundation for the future, for receiving that life which is life indeed. O Timothy, guard what has been committed to you. Stay clear of worldly idle talk and the contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. In laying claim to such knowledge, some men have missed the goal of faith. Grace be with you. Since you have received Jesus as Christ and Lord, live in him, be rooted and built up in him, so that you may grow ever stronger in the faith you were taught. And be filled with thanksgiving. Do not store up for yourselves an earthly treasure, but store up heavenly treasure. And be filled with thanksgiving. From a homily on the Gospels by St. Gregory the Great, Pope. Let us listen to what the Lord says as he sends the preachers forth. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. We can speak only with a heavy heart of so few laborers for such a great harvest. For although there are many to hear the good news, there are only a few to preach it. Look about you and see how full the world is of priests. Yet in God's harvest, a laborer is rarely to be found. For although we have accepted the priestly office, we do not fulfill its demands. Beloved brothers, Consider what has been said. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. 
Pray for us so that we may have the strength to work on your behalf, that our tongue may not grow weary of exhortation, and that after we have accepted the office of preaching, our silence may not condemn us before the just judge. For frequently the preacher's tongue is bound fast on account of his own wickedness, while on the other hand, it sometimes happens that because of the people's sins, the word of preaching is withdrawn from those who preside over the assembly. With reference to the former situation, the psalmist says, But God asks the sinner, Why do you recite my commandments? And with reference to the latter, the Lord tells Ezekiel, I will make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be dumb and unable to reprove them, for they are a rebellious house. He clearly means this. The word of preaching will be taken away from you, because as long as this people irritates me by their deeds, they are unworthy to hear the exhortation of truth. It is not easy to know for whose sinfulness the preacher's word is withheld, but it is indisputable that the shepherd's silence, while often injurious to himself, will always harm his flock. There is something else about the life of the shepherds, dearest brothers, which discourages me greatly. But lest what I claim should seem unjust to anyone, I accuse myself of the very same thing, although I fall into it unwillingly, compelled by the urgency of these barbarous times. I speak of our absorption in external affairs. We accept the duties of office, but by our actions we show that we are attentive to other things. We abandon the ministry of preaching and, in my opinion, are called bishops to our detriment, for we retain the honorable office, but fail to practice the virtues proper to it. Those who have been entrusted to us abandon God, and we are silent. They fall into sin, and we do not extend a hand of rebuke. But how can we who neglect ourselves be able to correct someone else? We are wrapped up in worldly concerns, and the more we devote ourselves to external things, the more insensitive we become in spirit. For this reason, the Church rightfully says about her own feeble members, they made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. We are set to guard the vineyards, but do not guard our own, for we get involved in irrelevant pursuits and neglect the performance of our ministry. So great a harvest and so few to gather it in, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Beg him to send out laborers for his harvest. My people, trust in God at all times. Pour out your hearts before him. Beg him to send out laborers for his harvest. Let us pray. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.